Hello, this is Seth David from the world-famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, bringing to you another special screencast. This time, we're going to talk about some Microsoft Excel tips and tricks, keyboard shortcuts to make your life a little bit easier. We're going to cover five keyboard shortcuts in this short screencast. The first rule of thumb is get your hands off the mouse. The mouse will slow you down. The better you get at learning and memorizing keyboard shortcuts for things you do frequently, the faster and more efficient you will be at running around on a spreadsheet. So what I've done to demonstrate is I've created a spreadsheet, which is an export from a sample QuickBooks company file, so that we have a lot of numbers to play with. And I'm going to throw in a few extra tips on the video, since it's the video, over and above what's in the blog post, which you may hopefully be reading on the Toolbox for Finance blog, my accounting video blog. So one thing that's important to note, of course, is that the first sort of rule of getting around on ex in Excel on your keyboard is using the arrow keys, which is what I'm using now, as you can see. The mouse is stationary, and I'm using my keyboard, my arrow keys, to move around. That's first. The second thing you'll want to know how to do is using the control key while hitting the arrow. If I'm not on a space that has anything in it, then control and an arrow in any direction will move in that direction to the first place where it finds something. If I am starting out on a cell that's got something in it, then control and an arrow key in any direction will move the cell to the last piece of information or the last cell that's got any information in it. So I can quickly go, go left all the way to the header before January 15th and right all the way to the total. Now let's say I want for navigational purposes to be able to stop right on January 15th. Well then here comes one of the first actual written tips in the blog post. A control and a space bar will highlight the entire column. Then tip number two, control, shift, and the plus sign will insert an entire column since I've got an entire column selected. Then what I can do is I can actually use the, and here's a bonus tip, I can use the key on my keyboard that brings up my shortcut menus to bring up the shortcut menu that you see here. And then using my arrow keys, I choose column width. And let's just make that a 1. That will give me a nice narrow column so that it's not really so visible per se, but navigationally now when I use my control and my arrow keys right and left, it stops me on January 15th so I don't go on to the header or the description there. Now, of course, up and down has the same effect. And as you can see, it stops right before it finds a blank. If I'm on a blank, then, uh, for example, here, if I use my control and right arrow key, it's going to take me all the way to the rightmost column in the entire spreadsheet, which is column XFD. Uh, control left arrow will quickly get me back to the beginning. So sometimes what I will even do, if, I'm, if I know I'm going to be doing a lot of work and want to navigate quickly around, is, now here's another bonus tip, shift and the page down key will not only page down, but while holding the shift, it will highlight the cells. Now here's another bonus keyboard shortcut, hitting the minus sign, and I'm just choosing to use the minus sign as my marker, so to speak. Notice I'm now in the cell edit mode, but if I hold down a control while hitting enter, then it will put that into every selected cell. So it has the effect of putting whatever I've typed into every selected cell when I hold down control and hit the enter key. Next, what I can do is test this out. First of all, I can get up and down the entire spreadsheet very quickly. So I call this a ladder. What I've done is I've created myself a ladder because I can quickly climb up and down the whole spreadsheet. Now, coming over back into the data range, what this also does is, for example, if I'm on the cost of goods sold header line here, and I click my control and right arrow, it doesn't send me all the way off to the edge of the spreadsheet. Not the end of the world if it does, but like I said, all of this is about making things happen quickly. So now let's look at the uh, uh, another part of the second tip, which is let's say for some reason that I want my merchant fees to go above marketing and advertising. Well, a shift and a space bar will highlight the entire row. Control X will cut that data, and then I can move up one line. Again, shift and a space bar. Now I want to make sure, though, that I'm at the very beginning of the row because now what I want to do is hold down control, shift, and the plus sign. And what that does is it inserts what I had cut. Now when I've cut cells, what that does is it pulls them out of their original location and replaces them in the new location wherever it is that I'm trying to insert them. 
And of course, if I decide that I didn't want to do that, then a control Z is in Zebra is my magic undo keyboard command so that I am no longer uh, having to stick with that change that I've made. If I want to delete an entire row, again, shift and a space bar will highlight the entire row. Control and a minus sign will delete the entire row. Control Z, in that case, will put it back in. Now, let's say, because when I'm looking at something like this, I want to be able to see my headers. If I page down, I can't see what month I'm looking at. So Control Home, of course, gets me to the home location. I can situate my cursor over here right underneath January and just to the right of the, of the account names. And then Alt, W, F, and F again will freeze my panes. So now I can always see my months, and no matter how far to the right I scroll, I can always see my descriptions. If I want to get rid of that, Alt, W, and the S will actually convert the frozen panes to a split screen, and Alt, W, S once again will remove the split altogether. And when I have no split or frozen panes, Alt, W, and S will actually put the split in and an Alt W F and F again will freeze them. It's a lot of fun this stuff. Now finally um, what I wanted to show you before I sign off for the day is that uh, tip number five. If I were to give you five wishes your fifth wish by right should be to have five more wishes so that's what I'm going to grant you as your Microsoft Excel genie and in doing so what I'm going to give you is the tip that's going to lead you to learn more tips so what you do is you simply press the alt key just press it once and let go notice what excel does is it lights up these letters which in a sense indicates that by pressing that letter it has the exact same effect as if i clicked over there so now now that i've hit the alt key if i want to go to the view tab in the ribbon i hit a w notice it's got a w there I'm going to move my mouse away and hit a W, and sure enough, it takes me into the View tab. Now, because I'm in this keyboard shortcut mode, Excel remembers that I got here using the Alt key, so again, it continues to light up options with letters. So if I want to view grid lines, I type a VG. In this case, it's going to turn them off because right now they're on. So if I go VG, it turns them off. Now, once I've done that, there's no new place to go, so it gets rid of the Alt key shortcut tips. So again, just hit the Alt key, and they'll show up. So once again, the, the trick to learning how to do an infinite number of these is to just press the Alt key and see what lights up. If I want to go back to my home tab, I click H. And what you'll find is that over time, you tend to do the same things frequently. I knew I do. We're all creatures of habit for the most part as human beings. And so what you'll find is that you do the same things frequently. So you'll start memorizing keyboard combinations based on the things that you do. And I can guarantee you that you will find that you will work much faster and much more efficiently when you start to learn these keyboard shortcuts. At first, it's a bit of a discipline to kind of force yourself to keep your hands off the mouse. But the more you do this, the more you'll get used to it. And especially once you start seeing the benefits of it and how much faster you'll work in Excel, the, uh, the more you'll probably start emailing me and thanking me for giving you this wonderful tip and screencast today. As always, I hope you've gotten something valuable out of this. If you need more help, feel free to give us a call at 866-945-8070, and I'll be more than happy to log in with you, have you share your screen, and coach you through whatever it is you need to learn how to do. And as always, I look forward to seeing you on the web.